Hi, this is Coach Rob. I want to talk to you today about Microsoft Planner, a really powerful, versatile tool to create accountability in your organization. If you use the Office uh, 365 platform, you should definitely be using Planner. So let me give you a quick overview. There's two types of planners. There's a standalone app, and I'm going to start with that. And then there's also a tool inside of Teams. So I'm going to go up here to my apps, and you can see here I have Planner. I'm going to click on that. And so Planner, I'm going to start by making a new plan just to kind of show you the basics. Let's say we have a ELT meeting every week and we want to keep up with action items, right? So I'm going to say ELT action items. Uh, you can make it public, private. You can clearly add as many users as you'd like. And so it's going to open up. And the basic use for Planner is as a to-do tool, right? So you can see it's got a column here, and it's got add task underneath to-do. And I'm just going to simply say, hey, the EL team, somebody said we need to communicate the 2023 strategic planning calendar, right? <clears throat> so we're going to set a due date. We're going to say, hey, that needs to be out by the 13th of January, and we're going to assign that to Rob. Uh, after we've done that, we're going to hit Add Task. We're done. We've got our first task in Planner. Uh, again, somebody can capture another action item. We need to complete uh, 2023 forecast. You know what? We probably need to get that done by the 31st. We're going to hit Assign. I'm going to give it to myself again, and we're going to hit Add Task. So there we go. That's, that's the basics of Planner. At the very basic level, it's just a to-do list. Now, let me show you some additional things you can do with it. If I can click on one of those, I can actually, A, I can use labels. I can uh, set start dates, end dates, repeat dates. I can create a detailed description, which is nice to be able to keep up with. But more importantly, you can create checklist items. Uh, if you're using, if you're thinking like objectives, these would be your key results, right? So um, let's say we've got to uh, confirm calendar with business coach, you know how hard they are to get a hold of. We need to book the meeting rooms, uh, and then we need to send out calendar invites to ELT, right? So there's my steps, uh, and you can see now when I close this, I can actually see those steps on my planner board. And so in, in addition to the to-do, I've got a little bit more detail here. It's very easy. I can go through and I can click this off, and now you can see I'm one of three. Uh, another really interesting tool, if you review these to-do items every week, you can click on this and you can actually put comments. Maybe nothing happened this week. Uh, did not hear back from meeting facility. Uh, have left several messages, right? And so we could actually put send, and what it's going to do is it's going to start creating uh, kind of like a journal of comments, which is a great way to be able to go back and see what's been done on this particular to-do item. All right, so <clears throat> let me show you another use. A lot of people will use this tool as a traditional Kanban board. If you're not familiar with Kanban, here's one I set up earlier. Basically, this is where you use the columns, right? So we've got a column for to-do. These are the two items that we know we need to get done. Uh, we have an in-progress column, and then we have a done column. Again, traditional Kanban. So as we start to work on the new website, let's say I've created the outline, which means it's in progress, I can move it over here. Once I'm done, I can move it to the done column, right? And so this is just a nice visual way to see it. Kanban is really popular. There's a, there's, there's a whole bunch of things you can use these columns for. I've seen them used for teams. I've seen them used for individuals, departments, just all sorts of things you can use them for. So let's talk about teams. I'm going to open up my teams. This is really powerful, right? It's not up there, so we're going to go to all apps. We're going to say um, Teams. There we go. So I'm going to launch my Teams, <clears throat> and I've already set up. Let's say we're going to have a channel, a team dedicated to our strategic planning. So I've got one set up here. I've got a whole bunch of different channels, you know, whether we're talking about the strategy, long term the annual initiatives, the quarterly game plan. But let me show you what this looks like. Let's go to the annual initiatives. Um, up here, I've created a planner board inside of Teams, and I'll show you how to do that in a minute. 
And if we click on it, you can see here's my Kanban style. I've got to do, uh, I've got in progress. I really like having an on hold in case we, we decide to put it on hold. And then we have the done. And you can see I've got four initiatives for the year, continuing education, best places to work, uh, documented and followed SOPs, and then we've got some new BD we've got to do, right? And then for each one of these, again, I like the OKR format. We've got some very specific results that we need to have for each one of these initiatives. And again, as we, as we start on these, we can move them over. We can start clicking off of items, and it's a real easy way to be able to manage your annual key initiatives. Love this tool. Again, you can use the same thing for the quarterly uh, priorities or rocks. And again, I've got another Kanban board, but now I've got some new tools. Look at this. I've got labels by department. So I can see operations, I can see sales and marketing, I can see accounting. I've also got some labels to show which quarter am I working on? Is this a Q3 priority, a Q4 priority? And so a couple of things I haven't shown you yet, but over here there's a whole bunch of really cool tools to be able to filter. So I'm gonna go to filter and I'm gonna say, hey, show me everything that's late, right? If you put due dates on here, you can see what's late. You can see what's coming up today, tomorrow, this week. We can also view, because I have the labels, show me everything that operations is working on. Show me everything that sales and marketing is working on. Show me everything that I am involved in, right? So there's a couple of quick ways to be able to view and filter out these views. I love this. And then there's, there's really four different views. We've been looking at the board view. I think I like this the most because I'm, I'm into the visuals and post-it notes and I just like this. But you, but you can also view it by list, a little bit more tactical and practical. You can also view it as a chart, which is kind of like a dashboard format. It starts throwing up some stats about how far, who's behind, who's, uh, who's moving forward. And then we also have a schedule tool. So these are a couple of different ways to use the planner tool inside of Teams. So I kind of skipped over. Let me show you how to set it up inside of Teams. I'm going to go to my general channel. I'm going to go up to the plus button, and I'm going to add a new app for the general channel. And inside of Teams, it's actually called Task by Planner and To Do. It's not called Planner inside of uh, the Teams channel. Here you can uh, create a new plan, start from scratch, or you can actually pick an existing plan that maybe has already been created. So that's my quick overview of Planner. It's a really powerful tool. If you're using Office 365, there are so many uses for this. So please, if you have any questions, reach out to us at coach.win, and of course, make sure that you're following us for more videos.